Young Thug, one of the faces of modern Atlanta rap, has had beef with more rappers than you'd expect. But one thing about Thug is that he had a reputation of trolling his enemies with short and funny Instagram videos while being incredibly disrespectful at the same time. Lil Wayne and Young Thug's beef isn't any new news, but many people don't know how deep it really got. Young Thug has been one of Wayne's biggest fans since the beginning. Got um, Wayne, Wayne, and Wayne. <laughs> I won't listen to nothing else. The fact that the n got like a hundred M's and he still rap every day. It's amazing. Thug was only 19 years old when he predicted that he would one day sign a Young Money Records with Lil Wayne. Hey, so what's next for Young Thug? Who should we look forward to you working with? Do music and your mixtapes gonna come out? What can we expect in 2011? Wayne, Young Money. That I'm working with them. You are? Right now? No. Are you, are you going to? You're okay. going to. Yeah, Young Money, I'm coming. And while never officially signing, Thug eventually got in touch with Birdman and even looked up to him as a father. Man, everything in the world, everything. Like, yeah, that, he like a real dad though. Like a real father, <laughs> real father figure. Thug and Birdman were seen together a lot. They hung out, performed at concerts, and even attended All-Star Weekend together. But it wasn't too long before things started to get shaky. In late 2014, Lil Wayne was preparing to release his final album, The Carter Five, and Birdman was holding him back. Wayne got fed up and sued the label for $51 million while cutting off Birdman and everyone around him. In April 2015, Young Thug announced his album, The Carter Six, saying he was doing six through 10 since Wayne did one through five. Thug meant nothing Nothing bad by it at all. He was genuinely wanting to continue his idol's legacy, but Wayne saw it as a mockery since Thug was so close to Birdman, one of his new enemies. Two days after the announcement, Wayne dissed Young Thug at one of his shows mentioning Birdman's new label, Rich Gang, and saying that people shouldn't listen to people who pose naked on their album covers. Also, before I go any further, I want y'all to understand that there's only one mother <laughs> caller. You need. Also, before I go any further, Yo, I want y'all to do me a favor. If y'all ever um, have Rich Gang or whoever it is in this mother, y'all let them know I said. Also, before I go any further, I want y'all to do me a favor and stop listening to songs that uh, that post naked on their mother. Now, Young Thug responded on Instagram and said that he would never go back and forth with Wayne because he considers him his idol. I understand that Lil Wayne is frustrated about his career and. I feel him on that, but this is my item. I wouldn't ever in my life swap words with him or beef with him about nothing. This is a person that I look up to. Ha ha. A few days passed, and Wayne did thug again, saying, ain't no mother such thing as Carter Six, while at one of his release parties in Ohio. If there were any other albums that dropped recently, tell him I say suck my <laughs> Carter Five coming soon. Ain't no mother such thing as Carter Six. Just days before Thug released Carter Six, he faced some legal issues forcing him to rename the album to Barter Six. When he announced the name change, he also announced that he was going to have his first show in Holly Grove, Louisiana, Wayne's hometown. He even sent Wayne a threat, telling him to meet him there. Yeah, yeah YSL, Carter Six coming out Friday, first show. New Orleans, Holly Grove. Meet me there, Betty. Beat me there, you did. With them too, nigga. Yeah. But when Thug actually performed in Holly Grove, they booed him off stage. Coincidentally, on the same night Lil Wayne was performing in Thug's hometown of Atlanta, his tour bus was shot at on the highway. Police later arrested Jimmy Pee Wee Winfrey for the shooting, and the crazy part about it is that they revealed that he was one of the guys in the back of Young Thug's video holding a weapon. Young Thug really had them shooters with him, but Compton rapper The Game had a few words he wanted to share with Thug too. At one of The Game's concerts, he decided to call Thug out, saying anyone that has a problem with Wayne has one with him too. Anybody Thug saw it the next day and went on to Instagram to throw shots back. See, you used to be a crip, now you're blood. So I don't want no smoke with you. You got bloods and crips on your team. And you was a male stripper once before, so I don't want to fight you. I don't want no germs on you. And you know I'm in LA more than I'm a Schwarzenegger. And he the governor. Yeah. yeah. The game didn't take Thug's words lightly though. He posted a video responding to Thug threatening him. I just seen your little video, you. You paint your nails like a girl. You call your 
bae, and you are Keep f***ing around, niggas gonna drive by that nail shop and light that mother up. But before it got any further, Chicago rapper Jojo Capone made a video saying he spoke with both Young Thug and the game and agreed to squash the beef. It's the love and respect that we have for each other, you know what I'm saying? And I was always the wild card in the street all over the world. So if I can relax and chill out, you know what I'm saying, and say y'all bring peace to each other, let's respect each other, then both of them honored that and, you know, and, 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 uh, and fortunately, we got them to squash the situation. Thug even made an apology video. See, the way the world is set up, they want all blacks to kill each other, but we're not. Black lives matter, so I salute gang, I respect them. I'm sorry for making that um, post about them. You know, even though he was wrong and he was in the wrong business and taking up for a that wasn't taking up for themselves, it's all good. The game replied with a video of his own saying it takes a real man to apologize. I seen Thug a video and shit. I think it take a real to apologize and dead some shit. I think the next phase is getting him in tune shit, Barry, cause tune my and then getting tune and Birdman to settle they shit and get back to getting their money, you know? OG out. But their beef sparked right back up in September of that year when the game stopped by the Breakfast Club for an interview. In the interview, Charlemagne asked him about rap beefs and the game responded saying, it ain't nobody to beef with. Now you haven't had a rap beef in a minute either, man. Last, last ain't one nobody there. to beef with. <laughs> it seemed like you was doing it for the sport at one point. So you and Young Thug had a quick little back and you forth. You see, yeah, it was oh, real I quick. forgot about that. Yeah, real quick. You, you know. That was the quickest back what and forth. What happened with that? I mean, you know, you know. It gets real. Game's crazy. You know, and um, you know, I went to Atlanta right after it started, and you know, I, you know, it got real. Thug saw this the next day and posted another video threatening Game. The Game, why is you on um, what this thing called? Why is you on the revolt, the vote, the Breakfast Club? Trump, you came to Atlanta, something got real monkey, boy. I'm gonna upload a video since you call yourself tough. Got these folk capping. Yo, cap, boy. He also posted an old video of the game apologizing. I jumped out of pocket, man, so that's my bad. Really don't apologize. And it ain't nothing, man. So you know what it is, man. I got a lot of respect. We got too many, too many motherfuckers be with this all up in this So it's all love, my You know what I'm saying? I'm going to take that one on the chin. It's all good. The game posted a meme trolling Thug the next day, saying he's probably getting a French tip at Lennox Mall. But Thug responded with a meme of his own, mocking game for being a male stripper. And even though they sent many subliminals at each other over the following years, their beef has kind of faded out. But Thug got way more disrespectful with Kevin Gates than he did with the game. Back in early 2014, Kevin Gates made a video confronting young Thug about dodging him. Damn, yeah, bro, nigga don't pick up the phone with Gates call. Damn, what a told you something about me? Come on, man, keep it real. Just tell me, man, Gates, I ain't rocking like that, man. I won't pull. Fuck you. You hear me? I don't get tired. But Thug replies, snapping on Gates, telling him to pull up. Hey, man, I don't get tired of these chilling saying I don't get tired of fing these drinking this motherfucker. act. Only thing I can get tired of is a slick diss, and you know who I'm talking about. Now, them so don't get tired of spraying at your Pull up, boy. But later in the same year, Kevin dismissed the beef during an interview, claiming he doesn't know anything about it. Could you elaborate on uh, the little stuff you got going on with Young Thug, man? Is there any I don't issue? know what you're talking about. I don't get tired. But before we get into the next rapper, leave a sub if you're enjoying this video so far. Young Thug and French Montana got into it real bad. It all started in 2020 when French Montana said in an interview that he would beat Kendrick Lamar if they were going hit for hit. I mean, honestly, you could put somebody like Kendrick Lamar next to me on the same stage in a festival. I might outshine them, not because I'm a better rapper or whatever it is, it's just I got more, more hits. He doubled down on Twitter and said he just believes in himself. When Young Thug saw this, he went to Instagram and put in his two cents. Stupid he said he got more hits than Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Fool. But Frisch responded with an IG post mocking Thug for wearing a skirt, calling him broke and saying they could go hit for hit since he wants to jump in. Thug responded, denying the skirt rumors and threatening to leak a video of French Montana getting knocked out. You post a picture, that ain't me on that picture, Lane Green. The whole world been thinking that too, man. I'm finna say, so gonna say something about that, man. That ain't me with that ugly skirt on that, with that hat. Get my phone, get my phone, I'm finna call me right now. Get my phone, get my phone, I'm finna call me. I'm finna make me, I'm finna, I'm finna show your Get my phone. <laughs> I'm gonna make you send me the video. Just get my phone. I'm gonna show everybody. I'm gonna show the whole world you getting knocked that. Get my phone. Get my phone. 
I bet, I bet Meek found that video. He even said French's Bugatti is fake and that he's crippling in debt. We ain't even talk about these fake ass Bugattis and fake ass houses with these pools. And you can get put out of in the next two, three years and all that cheese. We ain't even gonna talk about none of that. Thug kept going, posting pictures of French in awkward positions and threatening him over and over again. He even pulled up to one of French's old homes to prove he was no longer living there. This is a rent sign. It's a sale sign right here, so I know it's for sale. French doubled down, saying that it was Thug wearing the skirt in the picture and he has more money. That's you with that skirt, man. You must have fell on your head or oh, them jeans you got on too tight. <laughs> fake Bugattis, fake houses. I still got a full computer full of your hooks. You've been on my since day one before you. Bro, are you talking about millions? Are you talking about houses and water? I wasn't even trying to show you no, no pool. You... What are you talking about, man? He also said he'd give Thug a million dollars if he can show the video of him getting beat up. And if, and if me got some footage like that, tell him to show it to you. I'll give you a million dollars. Show it. French made another video later that day thanking Thug for wearing a dress in his No Stylist video and offered Thug $1 million again if he could somehow show the video of him getting beat up. <laughs> hey Thug, man. Thank you for wearing that skirt for me on No Stylist, you heard? <laughs> and if you find that footage from me, tell him I'll give you an extra million dollars. <coughs> on my son's life, you get that right. footage, I'll give you a million dollars. Because <laughs> 50 would have bought it first if you were smart, you would have thought of that. You're ready. But besides that, uh-huh, talk to him. You don't got more money than me. <laughs> but Thug just replied with the video, telling French not to get in his feelings. French Montana. Listen, bro. Get out of your feelings. I'm only speaking from an artist standpoint. You do not have nowhere near more hits than Kendrick Lamar whatsoever. You probably won't ever have more hits than Buddy. So, get that out of your head. I don't know what you're taking, but get that out of your head. But around this same time, 21 Savage made a tweet saying Thug was cap, and everyone thought he was referring to the French Montana situation. But Thug cleared that up in the same video. Second of all, I got off the phone with Savage. I told him I was coming to f with him in Atlanta for a few days. I was supposed to get on the jet yesterday, and I was supposed to get on the jet today, but I ain't make it. So that's why he put it up and said, I'm, I'm in the hall of cap. We don't got no smoke with each other. He even said he only wore that skirt in the No Stylist video because he felt like it was real support. Third of all, that's what I forget for even fucking with like you. I wore that dress in your video just to sh show love and support because I only put that dress on when it's real, when I feel like it's real love or what this what it's supposed to be. That's the only time I do that type of shit. Cause I thought it was love, but that's the thing is I get for fucking with like you. But it's okay. I know you smoke dope. But we found out the real reason behind their beef after Thug dropped a screenshot of some old DMs between the two with him pressing French. French explained it a little better in a call with the Breakfast Club. Thug told you why it went left. It had nothing to do with Kendrick. I never disrespected the man fiance. We was at a video shoot. We was we was all drunk, this and that. And I don't remember. This said this said I said something to her, like tried to holler her something. I don't remember. So he had hit me and I'm like, bro, nobody would never do that. So Would you apologize then? Yeah, yeah, I put a on. And I saw him two months ago. I went up to him personally by myself and I tapped him on his shoulder. He turned around and gave him a pound. So I thought everything was cool. So it was really over Jerrica. It was over Young Thug's fiance. A few nights later, French posted a double XL article about Young Thug allegedly wearing a fake AP watch. Thug reposted French's post on his story and said, That's all you got, Auntie? But things between the two were kind of dry until a month later when Thug released his joint project with Chris Brown titled Slime and B. Slime and B sold a whopping 19K first week, which is terrible numbers for the two superstars. And French took his chance and left a comment. He said, I'll be there wrong if I say anything. But you know what? I love Chris and we done squashed the drama with Thug. And I really like this album. I think it should have been promoted more. But Thug felt the satire in this comment and responded with a post on his story saying to French that the only reason it sold so low is that they had it available on SoundCloud for three days and they weren't shooting for high sales. He also threatened to drop his album right then. But French Montana later went live with Fat Joe and confirmed their beef was squashed. You're not gonna come and call me a fool no one is about something else that had nothing to do with me and Kendrick. Just so you come out like, it was whack. It was whack and I hate that it happened like that. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like, you know, I want everybody to do their thing. I ain't got no beef with them. It wasn't no real beef. 
but Thug got way more disrespectful with Plies after his daughter was involved. In September 2015, Plies posted a video of Young Thug's daughter cursing, talking about how she's tired. He captioned it, current move, and put a bit hashtag in the comments in a jokingly manner. But Thug didn't take this lightly at all. He replied, demanding that Plies remove the video off his account. Man, listen, I want everybody in the world to act this Plies and tell this I'm gonna take this motherfucking video of my daughter off of his motherfucking page, call him out her name. It's gonna be a problem. That video ain't down a day on, on everything I love is problems, bro. I'm with whatever you wanna be with. Plies responded with a video of his own, saying that he had no idea it was Thug's daughter and that he doesn't disrespect children. Foremost, I never disrespect nobody, children, never have and never will. I put up an IG post of a little girl, I ain't know who the f she was. All I know, she was speaking on how I felt and still feel like she's speaking for me. And if you had a problem with it, you asked me to take it down. You don't threaten me to do nothing. Thug responded again. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, big guy. You sound like you a little frustrated and mad. Knowing damn well you was dead wrong. You said you don't disrespect a person, kid, but you called my daughter several times. Get the video down. And he captioned it, you're not the only in trouble, the mom is too. I would never condone my child cursing, and had I known about it, it would have never been on the internet. Thug further explained the beef in an interview with Sway in the Morning. He even said he was going to slap Plies the next time he saw him. Mm -hmm. He's not the one that started it, so I can't have a problem with him putting it up. I only had a problem with him because he said, bitch. And I understand, you know, where he come from, Florida, that's like a popular word. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they used to saying it, but I don't understand how you can call a little girl the B word too many yeah. times. Yeah. Man, I might slap the f man. Yeah. I might slap sh man when I see him, man. I swear to God. Mm -hmm. Plies didn't reply to Thug's threats until a few months later when he did an interview with Complex. In the interview, he referred to Young Thug, saying he can't compete with lower tier artists, and he even mocked Thug's recent album sales, saying how he only sold 14,000 in the first week. When this interview was brought to Thug's attention, he went on a Twitter rant, blowing on Plies. He was telling Plies all of his accomplishments, like buying his family houses and cars, and he even said he has more hits than him. Thug kept going laughing at Plies, telling him he needs to tour to make some money and that nobody messes with him because he disrespects kids. He ended his rant by saying he doesn't care enough to show any money. But their beef ended after Plies did an interview with The Breakfast Club and said that Thug was just trying to use his name to get clout. Them kind of situations don't disappoint me. Like, I understand the game. Like, when you got cats who ain't popping trying to get popping, they just say what they want to say. and the Dog ain't popping, so. Dog popping now. Oh, okay. Young Thug would clearly take it there with anybody, no matter who you are, unless you're Lil Wayne.